Shalom, Slavi Shore. Welcome back to Sweet Good Torah. We're blessed to have Rabbi Mordecai Darvish back with us. We're learning Misa Bereshis, the fourth day of creation. Anything you want to say right off the bat before we get started? Some deep, wise words for everyone out there. Uh, please like, subscribe, uh, share this video with all your friends, anybody you know it, you know, help us uh, get a reach out there. Oh, it's so great. It's so wise. It's, it's so great. And if you guys like it, please, any Torah questions, we'd be more than happy to answer. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. And we love to uh, keep seeing you on you know, our videos. Okay, let me uh, bring the Pesukim up here. And we'll jump right in. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So we're starting day four. Amazing day, the heavens. So let me move this down so we can see. And uh, the first Pesuk, it's Vayomer Elohim. And Elohim, the aspect of din, judgment of Hashem, of God, he says, let there be these great lights in the expanse of the heavens. To separate between the day and the night. Sorry. And uh, he's going to separate between the day and night, and they will be signs for the, the, the holidays, the, the, the holidays we have throughout the year, the days and the years. All right, what do you, what do you want to say about all this? Incredible stuff. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, so the first thing is uh, you look at Merot, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the word Merot, it comes uh, from the word to see, Merot, mm -hmm. right? So these luminaries are going to help us see the difference oh, wow. between the night and day. Mm. right um the, the sun and the moon obviously give us light in this world so we can we can see what's going on um again the night is the aspect of judgment and the day is the aspect of chesed which is uh, kindness so we wouldn't be able to distinguish when was when unless we had some kind of sign so this is our sign also um there's a special type of sickness if you look at the way the world the word is written it's marat Marat mm -hmm. means like um, like a, a sickness, <clears throat> an illness. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, that illness was created um, uh, on the on the fourth night, which is uh, our sage told us was a very dangerous uh, time to go out at night at, at this at this um, place. Also, um, when you um, when a person acts like a tzaddik, acts like a righteous person, he illuminates the world. When he doesn't. He darkens the world. Mm -hmm. So it's into two in that word, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's incredible. So I got this incredible safer. I borrowed it from the Aguda Library this week. It's the Malbim on Bereshis and, and, uh, and Noah. And it says some incredible things in here. So one thing he said I thought was so fascinating, he quotes from Eov, he quotes from Job. He says, the Pusik, he says, where, where had you been when I laid the foundation of the earth? when the morning stars sang together. And it's interesting, he says they, they sang together. He says this is alluding to the force of gravity, the attraction between the sun and planets and all the stars. There's this force of gravity, and it's alluded to in Eo. Another thing he said that was very interesting is he was saying that they're singing together and all these orbital, orbital paths and, and everything that's set in the, in the heavens um, there's a certain distance from, you know, planets to the, the, the sun and, and, and galaxies, and there's a certain distance from each planet to the sun. And he's saying it's in a relationship that's called the music of the spheres. And he's saying like on a violin, like the, the different lengths of the strings produce a different, you know, a tone, a different note. And there is some kind of relationship of, uh, you know, the distance of these planets from each other. And it's like the distance of... Um, you don't want a violin string and there's different notes and there's something in this mystical thing of the music of the spheres that's out there and the stars singing and just really incredible stuff. I mean, we're just going to just dip a little bit into that. But another incredible thing that's said in the safer is that when you have a mem in front of a word, it means it's something that creates something. So we call it the base hamikdash. We call the temple the base hamikdash. And it's, it's the memo in the beginning says it's something that creates Kedusha, Kodesh. It's something that creates holiness. The temple creates holiness. And the Mishkan, the, the movable temple that we had in the desert in the Midbar, it's a Mishkan and it creates Shochem. It creates 
a, a neighborhood, a dwelling place, and it's a dwelling place for the Shekhinah, the, the, the physical, you know, you know, uh, revelation of Hashem, this infinite being in the world. And it's just, and here we have Ma'oros, and it's something that's creating light. It's creating light. So the sun and the moon is something that's creating light. And if I can just go back to the spheres, I want to talk about the spheres in this too, and talking about the Shefa from Hashem. Let me, um, let me get out of this share for a second. I want to bring up the spheros. And we can talk about the deeper, higher level of things that are going on here. Just really incredible stuff. Let me see if I can get that up there. I may have to do this one more time. Sorry for that. And let me just see if I can bring it up. Okay, so now we got the spheros and we're bringing that up. And I want to talk a little bit about how there's this infinite being, the Ein Sof, and there's the Or Ein Sof, you know, and there's the light from this infinite being, and there's the Shefa, there's the, the, the spiritual flow coming from Hashem, and it's coming into the heavens through like the Mazalos, through the constellations, through the sun, like the spiritual light comes through the sun. And then we have this physical light that comes into our world. And same with the moon. And, and, and these bodies, they have an effect on like the moon, you know, the scientists have found it has an effect on the tide, you know, the, uh, the waves and the, the, the high tides and the low tides uh, of the ocean. And there's an effect on growing things like certain vegetables and fruits grow better during the day with the light of the sun and, and certain fruits and vegetables grow better, you know, during the light of the moon. And it's just incredible stuff. And it's all this flow from Hashem that's coming into our physical world. Anything you want to say on the higher level of like spheros and the heavens and all that? <laughs> well, um, if you look at the, the second sphere, it's Chachma, yeah. right? It's wisdom. Um, it says anybody who uh, is born, the Gemara and Shabbos says anybody who's born on Wednesday, right? You know, hmm. be the fourth day <coughs> will be uh, wise, wiser than normal, uh, normal oh. human being. Oh, what? yeah. And, the, and that's so beautiful because like this is the day of the great lights in the heavens. The great lights, and when we, right. when we get that inspiration, when we figure out a problem we've been working on, we see it. We see in our heads, we see the solution. It's like that light that goes off. It's like Eureka, I got the... And it's exactly. like, you know, exactly. Oroe, come and see. And yeah, and so Chachma. So this is the day, the fourth day is the day of Chachma. Very, very fascinating. And then just to, just to go back to this. So oh. Malchus... Uh, it's also... It, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. It's also, um, if we go, because we know that the days are analogous to the Chesek, Vur, Tiferet, Netzach, okay. Yisod, and Macho, the seven, the seven right. lower sphere. Okay. Um, and, and this would be, uh, the fourth day would be Netzach, victory. Ah, and that's so, and that's so fascinating because Netzach is also not only victory, but I also think it means like eternity. Eternity, exactly. And, and connection to the infinite. So this fourth day is our connection to the infinite. And really we feel such wonder when we look up in the stars and, and see these wondrous, you know, planets and suns and constellations and everything that's going on. Um, so that that's right. It's amazing. It's Netzach. It's, it's tapping into that infinity. I want to just try to see if this will work. I, I noticed that Zoom drops frames a little bit, but I had this really beautiful video showing some of the wonders of the Shemayim. I just want to play it for a little bit, see if we can get that to work a little better. We'll see how it goes. So let me see if I can share that video and just take a look uh, like Hashem's wonders, just the beauty of all this. Let's see if we can get it to work a little bit here. The exact number of galaxies in the universe is not known for certain yet. It is supposedly well over several hundred billion. Galaxies may be of all sorts of different shapes. As for the main varieties, they include elliptical, spiral, lenticular, and irregular galaxies. There are subcategories for these as well. The Milky Way, for example, is a barred spiral galaxy. Since any galaxy consists of a great number of stars, these objects' masses may reach incredible values. The mass of the dwarf galaxy Segway 2, for example, is just 550,000 times that of the Sun. So, I mean, I, I could, I mean, I could watch that all day. I mean, I mean, just, it just blows you away when you start to look at it. And I just want to show a little bit of the wonder and the majesty of like, you know, Hashem's, you know, the, the Shemaim and just hearing how vast it is. I mean, just how vast and huge, you know, this creation is of the, you know, the, the Shemaim, the heavens. It's just, it's just really incredible. So I'll bring, I'll bring the Pasukim back up. And yeah, right, uh, right. yeah, I mean, there's just so much, right? So much to talk about. 
so much. And um, I don't know, anything you want to say more on that, Pusik, or should we just go, should we just? No, uh, yeah, we just go, yeah, yeah. into the, okay. the other verses. They, they'll play out themselves. Okay, so then the next Pusik is, Oros virakia shamayim lahayir al ha'aretz vayihichain. And they'll serve as lights in like this rikia, this firmament, or this expanse of the heavens to shine upon the earth. And it was so. Right. Again, to, to give the ability to see. Mm. Right. Lahayir, the ability to see. We use our eyes to take in most of the information in this world. Right. It's a, we say a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm. And so these luminaries are going to help us see. But there's the mind's eye as well. So they'll help us understand, mm. not just see. Yeah, I think from what you were saying before, when we had, let me see if I can go back up a little bit. So when we had Maoros in the first Pusik here, in Pusik 14, it's it's missing the Vav. It's not full. As you were saying, that leads to like, that's the, sometimes the, not the full, it's not the full potential. But here in this Pusik, which is very interesting, this is with the Vav. This is the full potential of illumination in the world and mm. spiritual illumination. And that's mm. going to light up the world. So when we look at it right. from the level of spiritual illumination, this flow from Hashem we were talking about, uh, you know, just, you know, this is it. This is the potential. This is lighting up the world with the spiritual wisdom. And, you know, and I just, let me just go back. I want to just go back to Spiros, point out something else too, real quick. And you can, you can correct me if, uh, but I, 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 I think, tell me if this is right. I, Malchus is the earth. So the lowest of the spheros is the physical world. It's the earth. I believe, is Yesod, is Yesod the moon? Is Yesod the moon? Is that, um, so I've, I've also heard that Zer Anpin, that Zer Anpin, especially Tif Eris, which means beauty, harmony, that this is the sun here. In, in just, this is the spheros of our own solar system. This is just, the sephiros of the seven bodies of the solar system. Yeah, that makes sense. You have earth, moon, I believe this is sun, you know, then how exactly it goes Mercury, Venus, you know, Jupiter, Saturn. I, I you know, I, I don't want to go too far into it, but just showing this relationship. And what I really want to show is, so when you have the or Ainsof, when you have the or Ainsof, the infinite light of the infinite being, you know, of, you know, the, of God, you know, come into where it comes in through Kesser and it starts to travel through these paths with the letters of, the, of you know, the Lashon and Kodesh, the Hebrew alphabet. And then these lights are filtered in just on the solar system level, you know, through the spheros down into the earth, all received by the earth finally. So the spiritual light's coming through the sun and that's transformed into the physical light, the light and warmth through, the, you know, through the sun, the growth of the sun. We talked about the growth even of the moonlight and just and then there's the higher level, the spiritual illumination and the inspiration we can get, you know, from the heavens. I, I don't know if you want to add anything or uh, well, I'll go. I'll no. go back to Pesukim. Yeah, and let me let me bring the Pesukim back. I mean, it's just so it, it, this is a topic that's just so deep. You know, there's so much we could talk for hours on all this and we're just trying to not overwhelm people with like, you know, just just incredible spiritual concepts here we just give, give everybody a taste of uh the amazing thing that's going on here so then so the next pasuk is vayaas elokim es shnei hamaoros hagadolim and then elokim he made he made the two you know the two great luminaries two great lights and here once again we go back now missing the vav again just to, to note that es hamaor hagadol the the hayom, and then the great one, the great light will dominate the day, meaning the sun. The es hamaor hakaton, and and the the littler light, the lesser light, lemem shelles halayva. That's going to dominate the night, and then along with the moon, Hashem also gave the ace hakochavim, all the stars, all the stars of all the galaxies and universe. You know, the galaxies filling up the universe. Uh, what is <laughs> so much there? So much. So there. Well, I, I would I would say if I was a Bible critic, um, this is a perfect verse for heretics. Oh gosh! Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because if you don't have the oral law, then you're just looking at this. Wait, he made uh, two big luminaries. Uh, mm -hmm. The big one he called, uh, you know, to rule over the day, and the little one. I thought he made two big ones. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, uh, big and little? What's yeah. going on here, right? Yeah. Um, to rule over the night. 
what's going on here? So yeah, it, you know, you, you could say, um, you know, for a human wrote this, he's making an error. But because, you know, God, the infinite being wrote this and he gave us two Torahs, a written law and an oral law. The oral law tells us how to interpret what he wrote in the written law. Yeah. So, um, right, the, the two big luminaries, these are the sun and the moon, right? And what happened was the moon, these entities aren't uh, inanimate objects. They actually have a life. They actually have a soul in them. And uh, these entities, um, you know, uh, can speak for themselves. So the moon spoke in front of God and said, wait a minute, you can't have two rulers. There's only one king in the world. There can't be two kings, mm. right? Allu alluding to God himself. Okay. So um, God said, you're right. Go and make yourself lesser, you know, make yourself lesser than the sun. Uh, they're originally both the same size. And then God lessened the moon and made it get its light from the sun. Mm. And, uh, and so we, we learn a few things here. We learn, uh, first of all, not to complain. <laughs> yeah. if, you got, if you got it good, just keep yeah. it good. You know, the moon had a tricky explain. plan. It's like we're both big lights, but I want to be the only king. You know, why don't you lessen <laughs> that guy, the sun, and watch out, you know, <laughs> watch right, out right, what you're right. asking for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely don't complain. Yeah. Um, but, but even so, even in your complaint, God has a plan for you. Hmm. So uh, what happened is uh, the moon obviously lessened itself and it gets its light from the sun. But also, if you ever notice um, where the sun is, the moon is always showing its full side. It's never showing its um, lesson side because mm. we know the moon waxes and wanes. Um, so the Gemara explains that because God had um, mercy on the moon to not show its negative aspects, mm. uh, which is its lessened light, he always made the moon in a way that if we look at it, it's facing the sun. It's ne it never has its back. It's, it's negative side to the sun. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and I think also, like, you see, like, Hashem's Rachamim, like, even though scientists have, like, you know, tried to calculate the exact size of the moon, the exact size of the earth, the exact size of the sun, and the sun is so much more massive than even the earth and much more massive than the moon. If we look at it from our perspective here, where, you know, Hashem set up this beautiful, you know, display for us of the solar system and then all the galaxies, that they look pretty similar in size, which is interesting. They look the same size. See, and Hashem did that by positioning the moon much, much closer and then the sun in a perfect distance where they still look the same size. So we still know that they're the great, you know, the Maoros Hagadolin. They are the both the great luminaries, but yet Hashem had mercy on, on the moon and they still look the same size from our perspective. It's very, you know, it's very interesting. Yeah. Also, we, we, we should note that um, most of the world, the majority of the world made their mistakes um, if you look at the if the, look at the verses, and the verse says "mel and the memshelet, the memshelet is to rule." Mm. So they looked at these um, luminaries originally as servants of the king, but as time mm. passed, they looked at them as kings themselves. Uh -huh. And as even more times passed, they started worshiping these kings, and that's where we get Monday or Sunday, uh -huh. right? That, that's a um, great point. That's a great point, right? So, in, so I think it was like. Adam and Kava, after 130 years, they had uh, their third son, uh, Shace or Seth. And then I believe Shace had Enosh. And then in Enosh's generation, so that's the fourth generation of mankind. And then in that oh. generation, in that generation, they started making these mistakes of starting, Four, you know, oh, we want to worship the king. Fourth day. What's that? Fourth yeah, generation, so, fourth day. So fascinating, right? So fascinating. And also the mistake of there's only one Hashem, and Hashem has the four letter name. The Yud Hey Vav Hey name, the holy name of Hashem, four, and then here we make the mistake in the fourth generation, and uh, they said, "Oh, we want to give honor to the king. We want to honor the king's servants, and that's honoring the king." But that starts to take mankind in a very bad direction instead of directly honoring the king. And uh, right, and then Avoda Zara, you know, idol worship is born into the world, and right as like you say, it's so ingrained in the Western world. Monday, Sunday, you know. And then all the names are, are, are gods, you know, the false gods, the Elo, Elohim Acherim, all the names of the week. But what we talked about before is really, in the Torah system, it's really Yom HaRishon Shel Shabbos, the first day of Shabbos, the first day of the week, Yom Sheni. And this is Yom Revi. This is really the fourth day of Shabbos, the fourth day of the week. Every week we go through the same Misa Bereshi's pattern, you know. So, yeah. And now, so I want to go to the next passage. It's very interesting because... 
we're going to repeat, Hashem's going to repeat, and he's going to say, barakia hashemayim l'ha'ir ha'aretz. And, and, and he repeats, and Elohim, he, he sets them now into the Shemayim to shine upon the earth. And this be, may be a little resolution on, there's a big Makalokas that the very first day, you know, in the first, you know, extremely famous, you know, Pasuk of the Torah says, Bereshis bar Lakim es hashemayim ve'es ha'aretz. The first day, Hashem created the earth, the heavens and the earth. So if Hashem created the heavens and the earth, what's happening on the fourth day now? If the if the if Shemayim's already created on the first day, there's a big mock locus. What happened on the fourth day? Was, was everything created new in the heavens somewhat? Or were every, was everything created on the first day and now Hashem's just placing them where they all go? You know? So yeah, I don't so, know if so. we're gonna, yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 a, it's, a, it's it's a really good uh, philosophical uh, idea. No, mm -hmm. it's very it's it's really important, like to understanding who God is, right? So if yeah. you say the ain't so is the ain't so, right? Is the infinite being without any borders, right? Yeah. So even even when he's quote unquote creating, where exactly is he creating? Mm -hmm. We spoke about this before, right? There's only one place he can create, and that's within himself, right? Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to create within yourself? It's just basically making revealed what is already and to yeah. whom and we're going to be we're going to see that we are the creatures that were created for this revelation so mm -hmm. um god so to speak is revealing himself to us he's revealing what it is yes creation the revelation started on the first day mm -hmm. but basically everything was always there and it's just coming into being meaning coming into revelation yeah. to the spectator there's a there's a very interesting um, passage in the Torah where um, Hagar, the mother of Ishmael, um, you know, is crying over her son uh, dying, and um, you know, an angel appears to her and you know asks her what's wrong, and she says, "There's no water for the kid; he's dying. I need water." And it says that God opened up her eyes, and she saw that there was a well there. He didn't create the well, right? The well was always there. Mm. It's just she didn't have permission to see it. Okay. Um, so sometimes we don't have permission to see certain things, but really everything that's in existence is already there. Mm. And it's just whether we pay attention to it or not. And the, the person who looks into the Torah can see these things much more clear and much quicker because God used the Torah as the blueprint for creation, right? alma, right? He looked into the Torah and created the world. It is the blueprint for creation. And so, um, that, like, like you said, he's making these things revealed to man on the fourth day. But mm -hmm. really, they were always there. Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a great point. That's something incredible I learned in the Malbim uh, this week. And he was saying something really fascinating. He was saying, like, um, right, so the difference is, so the scientists are saying there's the Big Bang. The scientists are saying there's nothing, and then boom, there's a Big Bang, and then everything that exists comes in from this one point. But it's interesting because the Zohar is a very different, we talked a little bit about this on the first day, the Malbim elaborates, but really at first there's everything. There's the Ein Sof, there's this infinite being that fills everywhere, and there's the Or Ein Sof, and there's the infinite light of this infinite being that fills everywhere. And really what he did is in the middle of himself, he, well, he creates what the Zohar calls the lamp of darkness, and he starts to create this symptom where he starts, it's like a circuit breaker starting to limit the light. So he creates this big sphere, you know, of, a, you know, an illusion of emptiness of the infinite being. But it's like this dark, this lamp of darkness spreads this big sphere. And in this sphere is where the universe is created. And the Malbim said something incredible. He said, this is why it's the name Elohim. This is why it's the name of, of judgment and din. Because judgment and din is the symptom. That's the contraction. That's the self-contraction. That's why it's the name Elohim. Because the infinite being created this huge sphere in the middle of himself, in the middle of Hamakom, in the middle of the place, the universe. And, and right. And then so really there was there was light. There was this infinite light. And then first a, a sphere of darkness and emptiness had to be created, or the illusion that this infinite being is not there as much. So the universe can be created, you know, so it's really, it's really the opposite of the big bang in some ways. Yeah. Um, also, if you look at the word Otam, Otam, that should have a vav over there. 
It mm. doesn't have a vav to spell it out. Again, you can't learn the Torah without knowing the Hebrew language. Um, so otam, um, it really says atem. Mm. Atem is, is, is you guys. Basically, we're the ones who sanctify the moon, we sanctify the months, the years, the days, and all that stuff. Everything was created for us to use. Atem. And if you also flip up the, those letters, they spell emet, truth. Ah, right. Um, we put the man back in the middle there, we get MS. Yeah, we get... Right, right, right. So, yeah, you can, you, you know, if you, if you look at the world correctly, it means to look at the world truthfully. And it's not your truth. It's the truth of the creator. It's the objective truth. Because we can go back and forth on what everybody thinks is right, but there's only one creator of the game of life. And he's the one who's going to tell us what's right or what's wrong. Yeah, incredible. Right, so, so let's we'll go ahead to the next place. So, Velim Shol Bayom of Elila. So then this is to dominate the day and the night. So the first is so, and, and Elohim set them in the expanse of the heaven to shine upon the earth, to dominate the day and night. So repeating a domination of the day and night again. And Ule Havdio Bain Haoro Bain Hoshek. And again, a repeat of to separate light from darkness. Vayara Elohim Kitov. And Elohim saw that this was good. So now a repeat again. Interesting. A repeat again. Why, you know, what? You have insight into this. You have insight into why repeating, dominating day and night, why repeating, you know, separating between light and darkness. And then Elohim sees all this, that this is good. Because usually separation is not good. We saw on the second day when Hashem separated between the, uh, you know, the upper waters and the lower waters, not good. And Hashem doesn't like separation. He doesn't like Machlokas. He likes peace, you know, Shalom. He likes things unified, Yichud. So what's going on here? I mean, I think I have some thoughts. You know, what you have anything uh, you want to yeah, jump into? Your, yeah. your question beautifully lays it out. Yeah. Is that yeah? You know, God doesn't like when things are arguing and, and people are in strife. And same thing with the luminaries and the heavenly bodies. He didn't like the strife that was happening, but he turned the strife into goodness, as uh -huh. as usual, right? And in which case, one will rule over the night, and one will rule over the day. Okay, and there will be a clear distinction because night has its powers and the day has its powers and that's needed for man to discern when to do certain things like we pray um you know morning afternoon and night but we need to know exactly when to pray right mm -hmm. and if there aren't luminaries lighting the way for us there's no way to do so mm -hmm. and so and, and and so uh that distinction is is um fostered and it helps us serve the creator which is the ultimate purpose of all of creation mm. oh, that's beautiful it's like children fighting and, and you, no we're going to share guys you're going to get the day you're going to get the night where so one other thing i wanted to add there is like the or the light is like that's the goola that's the revelation of hashem in the world and and the choshek the darkness and the night the day right the day and the light is the goola the revelation of hashem in the world and and the night and the choshek the darkness is the gullus the exile when Hashem is like more Hester Panim, he's more hidden in the world, and those things are separated. And then like also the or is like the Torah, the mitzvah, like Torah or the Torah, the, the Eitz Chaim, the tree of life, this is the light, this is the day, and separating, you know, the Eitz Das Tovarah, separating the tree of knowledge of good and evil, separating evil out, containing evil in its place, separating you know redemption and exile and there's a good balance and all world history is based on this pattern and it's going to lead to the ultimate good so we've had our exiles we've had our redemptions like from egypt from babylon from persia you know from greece and bizrat hashem soon from the gullus edom from rome the longest one and it's all leading to Kitov. it's all leading to mashiach it's all leading to the world of all day all light and there's a famous midrash that the moon's going to become like seven times as bright. And then I think the sun's going to come. I, I forgot if that's also going to be 70 or seven times brighter. So it's just going to be, I think there'll be no more night. It'll just be beautiful, bright all the time. And we won't have the need for sleep or death. And it'll just be the world of Allah Mabba, just an illuminated, spiritually illuminated, you know, illuminated with wisdom, like we talked about, and just keto, all the good. Anything else to add there? Or should we just should we finish up no, day four here? And then... And then Vayihi Ereira, Vayihi Vokir, Yom Ravi, you know, and there was evening and there was morning and the fourth day, you know. Perfect. And we talked, right, we talked before how like the, the day and the, the Torah view really starts at night. We want to have a great night of like learning and 
and just doing good things at night to, to start off our day. And then we did this sheer during the day. And it's nice because sometimes you just you feel like Hashem's presence in the day and it's just in the heavens. But even at night with the moon and the stars is so inspiring, you know, so Hashem's given us good in he's given us keto in day in night you know just uh keto good all right so thank you guys i hope you enjoyed it please help us out if you like it you know like it share it subscribe it ask us torah questions and we can't wait to see you back on uh day five okay we'll see you soon okay so i yeah,